TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Israeli Air Force reportedly targets Iranian-funded precision-guided missile factories in Syria. Russia and the Islamic Republic of Iran have separately condemned the European Union over its decision to extend sanctions against the Syrian regime and its supporters. A shift in the power balance in conflict-ridden Libya has seemingly intensified the influx of arms shipments to the country's warring parties by their respective international backers. Unidentified aircraft targeted a number of warehouses in Syria's western Hama governorate, an aerial attack which the Damascus regime quickly attributed to the Israeli Air Force. Intelligence sources confirmed to TV7 that around 9.20 p.m., a number of missiles were launched from the direction of Lebanon's airspace toward warehouses situated near the Syrian village of Al-Zawi, which is located near the city of Masyaf. Syria's aerial defense array was activated, yet failed to intercept the attack due to a significant qualitative gap between the interceptors and the incoming projectiles. As a result, a number of warehouses, which were believed to operate as Iranian-funded production factories of medium-range precision-guided missiles, were utterly destroyed. And while the Damascus regime insisted that only material damage was caused, the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that at least nine individuals were killed, four of whom were identified as Syrian nationals. The reported casualty count is expected to rise, however, as a number of individuals, which are believed to be either Iranian or Iranian-backed militiamen, sustained critical injuries. It is important to mention that the targeted location had been subject to previous aerial bombardments, which were also attributed to the Israeli Air Force. The last reported attack in the area of Maysaf occurred less than two months ago when more than 14 Iranian and proxy fighters were killed when a similar center for the development of precision-guided missiles was destroyed. The IDF spokesperson's unit refused to confirm nor deny to TV7 its alleged responsibility. Now to another yet related matter. Russia and the Islamic Republic of Iran have separately condemned the European Union over its decision to extend sanctions against the Syrian regime and its supporters by one year in light of the continued oppression of Syria's civilian population by Damascus authorities. Following the EU Council's decision, EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell stressed that the EU is determined to continue its support to the Syrian people and remains committed to use every tool at its disposal to push for a political solution to the conflict that would benefit all Syrians and put an end to the ongoing repression. Borrell accused the Syrian regime and its supporters for the suffering of the Syrian population and underscored that EU sanctions target those responsible and those who finance and benefit from the war economy. It is important to mention, however, that the European Union removed from its sanctions list two persons and one company, which, according to Brussels, halted their sanctionable behavior. Meanwhile, in light of the European decision, Moscow condemned Brussels for what it claimed to be a disappointing decision that seeks to follow the unilateral policies of the United States. В то же время вызывает разочарование, что в конце мая Евросоюз вслед за США принял решение о продлении односторонних санкций против Сирии. Не раз указывали, что подобные рестрикции не только калечат сирийскую экономику, но и препятствуют закупке жизненно важных лекарств, медицинского оборудования, гуманитарных товаров. Заявленные изъятия, заявленные вейверы, как сейчас модно говорить, на деле не работают, сильно забюрократизированы. И, собственно, это подтверждают работающие в Сирии гуманитарщики. Separately, Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Abbas Musavi also condemned the European Union for its decision to extend its sanctions regime against Damascus. Tehran referred to the European decision as an illegal and inhumane act and strongly urged Brussels to lift all of its sanctions against Syria. Turning now to the Libyan front, where a shift in the power balance in the conflict-ridden country has seemingly intensified the influx of arms shipments to the country's warring parties by their respective international backers. 
After a year of consecutive gains by the Eastern-based Libyan National Army, or LNA, under the command of Khalifa Haftar, its Western-backed rival, the Libyan Government of National Accord in Tripoli, or GNA, under the leadership of Faiz el-Saraj, managed to shift the power balance on the ground in its favor after Turkey significantly bolstered its qualitative military edge with shipments of advanced unmanned aerial vehicles. The conflict immediately shifted in favor of the GNA, which managed to end a year-long siege on the country's capital, Tripoli. وجردتها من أهم تحصيناتها ولم يبقى لها أكثر من 35% من المناطق التي تمركزت فيها سابقا. The recent gains by the Turkish-backed GNA, however, have triggered a massive influx of heavy weaponry to the Russian, Egyptian and United Arab Emirates-backed LNA, raising prospects for intensified and much more destructive battles in the near future. The referred to shipments include, among others, Russian-made Pansir's S-1E surface-to-air missile systems, which are capable of downing the Turkish-deployed drones. Naturally, these newly introduced heavy weaponry have infuriated the Turkish-backed GNA. It immediately sought to blame the European Union's Mediterranean naval operation Irini for seemingly failing to enforce an UN arms embargo on the war-torn country. ومع هذه الانهيارات هناك رحلات شحن جوي تصل إلى قواعد حفتر الخلفية قادمة من مطارات الإمارات وسوريا محملة بالدخائر والعتاد العسكري في طواطئ علني من عملية إيرني التي تزعم أنها ستطبق حظر الأسلحة استنادا إلى قرارات مجلس الأمن الذي اشترط التنسيق مع حكومة الوفاق الوطني it is important to know that the stakes of the involved international powers are fiscally significant, as both the GNA and LNA have separately pledged to grant their international backers a substantial share from the vast resources believed to be in the country's Mediterranean exclusive economic zone, a fact openly acknowledged by Turkey, which once again vowed to bolster its support to the Tripoli-based government of national accord. <laughs> Doğu Akdeniz'deki doğal zenginliklerden faydalanmak üzere arama ve sondaj dahil işbirliğimizi ilerletmeyi hedefliyoruz. Ayrıca Libya topraklarındaki işbirliğimizi veya işbirliği alanlarımızı da genişletme hususunda görüş birliğine vardık. After Ankara signed a maritime boundary treaty with Tripoli, which effectively carved a significant portion of the Mediterranean Sea into two, Turkey has been preparing to launch offshore gas exploration within Libya's exclusive economic zone. Nevertheless, in light of the growing involvement from Russia and other regional powers, Turkey has delayed its exploration plans for about three to four months. Fatih Karadeniz'e gidiyor ama kimse sanmasın ki Akdeniz'deki faaliyetlerimize ara veriyoruz. Biliyorsunuz geçtiğimiz yılın sonlarında Libya ile deniz yetki alanlarımızın belirlenmesine ilişkin bir mutabakat anlaşması yapmıştık. Bu kapsamda Türkiye Petrolleri kendi ruhsat alanlarımızda petrol aramak için Maden ve Petrol İşleri Genel Müdürlüğü'ne başvuruda bulundu. Askı ve eylem sürecinin ardından önümüzdeki 3-4 ay içerisinde buradaki ilk faaliyetlerimize de başlamış olacağız inşallah. It is important to highlight that the Turkish-initiated pact with Libya defied both Cyprus and Greece, which reject it as illegal and geographically absurd amid their own claims to the territorial waters. Moreover, Turkey and Libya control of the zone could hinder development of Israeli, Cypriot and Greek gas pipeline deals, bearing direct financial implications for Europe, the United States, Egypt and Israel. Now in other news, Norway has frozen more than half of its pledged aid to the Palestinian Education Ministry this year and has conditioned the transfer of the remaining funds on the immediate change to the content of the Palestinian textbooks, which are believed to promote terrorism. 
This is the first time that Norway has withheld aid money from the Palestinian Authority after the parliament in Oslo defined the Palestinian curriculum as ruinous for the advancement of the peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. The Norwegian measure comes at the heels of a separate decision by the European Union's parliament last week, which officially condemned the apparent incitement against Israel in the new Palestinian Authority's educational curriculum. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's Global Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray for the salvation and peace of Saudi Arabia, alongside our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. I would like to also take this opportunity to thank all of our partners, as your dedicated support by means of especially prayer, as well as finance, allows us to serve you with our daily TV7 Israel productions. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.